Welcome to the Genesis Bible Study. I'm so glad that you have joined us. We are going to be digging into the book of Genesis. We're going to be reading and studying. We're going to learn how to do a book study, chapter study, um, character study, word study, verse mapping. We're going to use lots of different ways to dig into this book. So I'm so happy that you are with us. We're going to use the Genesis Bible Study books. If you don't have a copy, please order a copy today. And it's on our website, authorangiewilson.com. Okay, I want to tell you a little bit about my story, about how I've learned about studying the Word. Um, you know, first off, I'm a reader. I love reading. I would much rather read than watch TV, much rather read than participate in any type of sport whatsoever. Um, but I am working on that. I'm, I'm walking. But I've always loved reading, but I didn't always love reading my favorite book. And, you know, the Bible is my favorite book. It's the book that I base my life on. And I didn't always enjoy studying it. And, and reading it oftentimes was a challenge. I read it through the first time when I was in 10th grade in high school. And after that, I read it through multiple times. And, and down through the years, I've usually used one of those read the Bible through in a year charts to go by, one of those guides. And it was basically speed reading because I would read real quick and then check and then read real quick all of those multiple chapters that you had to read and then check. And then if you missed a day, then you, that was double, of course, reading. And but you wanted I had to get those check marks. So I would read through really quick. And then if I missed two days or heaven forbid, three or four days, which, you know, when my kids were young, I had a young family. Yes. There were lots of times that I missed multiple days and I would have to try to catch up and, you know, I wouldn't read all of those in one day, but I'd start reading two days, you know, during one time. And it was just speed reading. That's all it was. But the beautiful thing about God's word is you always get something out of it because it's, it's living. Second Timothy 3.16 tells us it's God inspired and the, the word there for God inspired is God breathed. It's the very breath of God when we read this word. So if you have somebody that, that you need to speak life into and you don't know how to speak life, speak the word. Because his word is life. It is very life for us. And it is, it is life changing. It's definitely life changing. So all of those times that that I would study or I would read, you know, I would get little nuggets. I would get little things out of it here and there. And it was enough because his word is amazing. So I would think, wow, I've had a really good study time. You know, yes. I, and I would underline something or I would highlight it. And I thought, wow, I've done a lot. But then I would go and I would listen to a Bible teacher or a, a preacher who would take a few verses or sometimes one little verse and have a whole sermon on it. This amazing sermon where they they did all of this and pulled all of this out of this one little verse, maybe a sentence or two. And I would think, how in the world <laughs> did they do that? You know, because I was used to speed reading. So I thought, how did they how did they even do that? And I remember one night after my husband preached a message, he had done that very thing. He had He'd taken one little verse and, and had this beautiful sermon out of it and all these notes. You know, I was sitting there taking all these notes. And so I asked him after church, I was like, how did you do that? How did you get all of that from that one little verse? And he said, well, it's just like outlining. You know, you just look at the verse and you just, you know, get a notebook or something and go and outline the verse. And on the outside, I was like, oh, okay. And on the inside, I was like, <laughs> Because as a student, I hated outlining. I had all the Roman numerals and the capital letters and the lowercase and the numbers and, 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 I, and I just hated that. And as a teacher, I've never asked students to outline because I didn't want to read outlines, a <laughs> hundred outlines. So, you know, needless to say, I didn't outline anything. You know, the thoughts of outlining the Bible, wow. <laughs> So I, I didn't do it. 
so fast forward a few months later, um, a friend of mine started a Bible study, and she asked me to join, and she said, we're going to be reading the book of Isaiah. She said, so we're going to meet at such and such place, such and such time. We're going to do Isaiah chapter 1. I'm like, gotcha. So I got my study Bible, and I went to my husband's library, and I got um, his Matthew Henry commentary. I got one of his Bibles, study Bibles. And then he also had a book that was just on uh, the book of Isaiah. So I grabbed all of those books, and I go into my office and I sit down on the floor and I put all these books all around me and I get a notebook and and I read Isaiah chapter 1 and then I read in my study Bible and then I read what Matthew Henry had to say you know and all these little things that start writing down on a notepad and 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 as I get to the end of the chapter you know when that hour or so is over I look down and I had a whole page of of amazing things, you know, although most of it was Matthew Henry, a lot of it God had given me insight, you know, something would come to mind, and I'm like, wow, and I would write that down, you know, that's good, thank you, Lord, I like that, and I realized that day, it's not rocket science, it's not difficult, it takes time, it takes effort, and desire to learn, and I had that more than anything, and when I realized that, that very day, my life changed as far as my as studying the Word. You know, I'm a teacher. I've taught for 25 years in public school system, and I've taught reading for 10 years. And there are many different strategies that we would teach that I teach children when they're trying to read. You know, sometimes we have struggling readers who barely can make it through a sentence, you know, much less comprehend what the sentence is saying because they're just, every single word is just, what is this word? So by the time they're at the end of the sentence, they're completely lost. But then there are some times where you have excellent readers who can read this paragraph to you beautifully, but then at the end of it, you'll say, okay, tell me about what you just read, and they're like, you know, have no idea, and they seriously don't remember what they read. They they didn't comprehend. So we had all these different ways to teach comprehension to students, things that I did every single day. And I realized one day, why am I not using some of those kind of strategies when I read? You know, some of them are, are simple, like rereading and, and questions, writing down your questions and, you know, making notes and making a, a graphic organizer, we call it in the teacher world, making some kind of, of organizational page with your thoughts. Okay, that didn't come out exactly like I wanted to, but <laughs> have um, some kind of page that's organized where you can put your thoughts down about that very chapter or that very verse that you read. Why wasn't I doing that when I would read the Bible? You know? And I really began to understand it better when I started using some of those techniques and when I started applying for myself what I taught every single day. So that's one of the things we're going to be doing. Or we're going to be learning several different ways to study. We're going to learn um, the GRASP study method that the G-R-A-S-P study method, and we'll go into that on a different day. Um, and that is just a way to keep you your study time organized. Because I know the enemy fights our study time. When you go in with your Bible and your journal and your cup of coffee and you sit down to read, then all of a sudden you think, huh, I forgot to do that load of laundry. And so your, your to-do list, maybe you start writing down, oh, I didn't defrost the chicken or, you know, whatever, I need to call so-and-so, and suddenly the, the journal that you had that you were going to write all of these beautiful notes on becomes your to-do list <laughs> because you're sitting there and all these things are running through your mind. So, but with the GRASP study method, it helps you get organized to where that's not an issue. And I always tell people, you know, put a notebook, put a little notepad beside your table or your, your Bible or wherever you study at, put the little notepad there to, if something does come to mind, then write it down. I need to call such and such, so and so, and write down what you need to do. So you get it out of your mind and you can focus on the Word.
And it's okay. It's okay to do that. So I hope that as you join us, that you will that you'll learn these strategies and that you will be able to apply them for your own study time. So today is just a little introduction, but I want you to turn with me in your Bible to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Let there be light. Today, as we are opening up the book of Genesis, let there be light. As you open that book, let God's light shine on you. You know, God spoke light. When there was darkness. He can speak light over us, over our lives, over whatever situation you may be dealing with right now. You may be in a dark place. You may think there's no hope. You may sit, you may sit in service time after time, Sunday after Sunday, and look around and think, there's no hope for me. You may look at people all around you and, and think, well, you know, she's okay, and, and they're okay, and their family's great, and their family's perfect. There are no fa perfect families, first off. And no one has a perfect life. Everyone struggles with different things. And God sees that brokenness in your life. Let his light shine upon you. Let his love shine upon you. He's there for us. He's not hidden. He wants us to seek him. The main objective of this whole study is to seek God, is to abide in him. Jeremiah 29 and 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. You know, God tells us multiple times through the Bible to seek him and we'll find him. He's not hidden. Like I said, he's not hidden. He wants us to search for him. He wants us to abide in him. And I hope that's what this Bible study will be, where you are abiding in him. You are seeking him through prayer and through his word. And as we seek him, we will find him. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what that darkness is that has just engulfed your life or your heart, and maybe no one even knows about it. Maybe you sit there with a smile on your face every Sunday and nobody knows that you're engulfed in darkness. I speak God's life, light to you. I speak that life and light. You know, today I want to to end our time in prayer. This was just a, a little introduction. We're going to start next time and we're going to dive in and we're going to be learning different study methods and we'll start that next week. We're going to start with the book study and we're going to be filling out a chart that tells you how to study the word. So I'm really looking forward to that and I hope you will be too. But let's pray together. Let's just close our eyes and let's just pray. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for this time together in your word. God, thank you for every single person who has joined us in this study. God, I pray that you would open up your word, open up our hearts and our minds to you, Lord. And God, open us up to your will in our life. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you for all that you've done. We thank you for, for giving us your word. And Lord, you see everyone that's here. You see the desire to learn. We wouldn't even be tuned in today if we did not have that desire to learn. We thank you for that, and we praise you for that. And God, we pray that you would touch every single heart. Help us to abide in you. And help us to seek you, Lord, with our whole heart. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us, and I can't wait to see you the next time.